Arsing. I mean, Scooby Doo releasing brand new book of lying. Hello, I'm Piers Morgan, and welcome to the King YouTube channel. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Harry and Meghan Markle initially denied any involvement in Omid Scobie's book Finding Freedom. However, it later emerged that they provided a substantial amount of information for it. Consequently, people are now wondering if a similar situation will occur once more as Scooby-Doo is about to release another book likely rife with falsehoods. This time, it's titled Endgame. What exactly this endgame refers to remains uncertain. However, it is promised by Scooby-Doo that it won't reflect favorably on the royal family. The Daily Mail has reported that Scooby-Doo, the author of Finding Freedom, has unveiled the cover of his latest book, Endgame, on Amazon, accompanied by a compelling description. The book is described as a probing exploration into the current state of the British monarchy, featuring an unpopular king, an ambitious heir to the throne, a queen ready to take drastic measures to protect her image, and a prince compelled to begin a new life after feeling betrayed by his own family. Even that brief description strongly reflects Meghan Markle. I mean, uh, consider it, a prince compelled to embark on a new life after feeling betrayed by his own family. From what I last knew, Harry and Meghan were the ones responsible for the trails. It's unclear how William King Charles, Queen Camilla and the rest of the family could be seen as the betrayers. The mention of a power-hungry heir to the throne is likely a reference to William, and it seems like Meghan is attempting to project her own negative traits onto others. The notion of an unpopular king also appears amusing, given that Harry and Meghan were the ones preoccupied with their public image and popularity. Most of the royal family doesn't seem as fixated on popularity. They are aware of their duty to serve and keep the citizens' content, but their focus may not be as intense as Meghan and Harry's. As per information provided by a source in conversation with the publication, it has been expressed that the situation is quite dire, even very distressing. It is improbable that royal advisers will issue any comments. However, in the event of allegations of racism, they will undoubtedly respond strongly to counter them. Given that the primary sources for these allegations are Meghan and Harry, it is virtually certain that accusations of racism will emerge. These allegations are likely to be entirely fabricated as has been the case in the past. Nevertheless, this is not expected to deter Scooby-Doo from writing whatever Megan instructs him to write. There are reports that Scooby-Doo might even disclose the identity of an unnamed member of the royal family who inquired about the potential skin color of an unborn arch official. It is anticipated that he will present this story in the most provocative manner possible to paint the unnamed family member in the worst light. However, it's important to note that simply pondering what an unborn child might look like does not constitute racism. It's widely recognized that Omid is effectively serving as the unofficial spokesperson for the Sussex. Therefore, it's reasonable to expect a significant level of interest in this book on both sides of the Atlantic. However, I have my doubts regarding the extent of interest in this book. My suspicion is that this book will uh, primarily attract Meghan and Harry's fans and individuals driven by morbid curiosity. Enthusiasts of the British royal family are unlikely to purchase it. I certainly won't, and I assume many of you won't either. After all, why would any of us want to spend our hard-earned money on a publication filled with falsehoods? The Daily Mail article further mentions that the publisher, HarperCollins, has previously claimed that the book will generate significant public discussion, and Scooby has indicated that it will unveil moments that should bring shame to the royals. In his prior work, Finding Freedom, he provided intricate details about the initial night Harry and Meghan spent together and recounted conversations between Meghan, Harry, and senior members of the royal family. It's evident that these conversations were likely provided to him directly by Meghan and Harry themselves, potentially involving recorded discussions. One of those bewildering aspects, or perhaps one of the most perplexing aspects in all of this, is that Omid Scooby-Doo is chastising the royals for potentially feeling ashamed of their actions. What's puzzling is that Meghan and Harry don't appear to feel any shame for their own actions, such as recording private conversations. Moreover, it's surprising that 
Somi Scooby-Doo himself doesn't seem to harbor any remorse for employing unethical means to gather information. At this juncture, it's increasingly implausible that anyone would perceive Omid Scooby-Doo as an impartial royal reporter who possesses a deep understanding of the subjects he discusses. Even this week, he engaged in what seems like an unjust critique of the king and queen. He took another swipe at the king and queen for walking on a red carpet placed over bare ground during their recent state visit to Kenya. While there was nothing inherently wrong with this choice, let's consider Omid Scooby-Doo's perspective. He posted on Twitter, suggesting that even if this was a decision made by the hosts, which it likely was, the optics of the king and queen walking on a red carpet to avoid getting their shoes dirty at Nairobi National Park seemed rather absurd and out of touch. He also suggested that a knowledgeable palace aide could have easily requested the removal of the red carpet. Nevertheless, Kenyan journalists have contested his viewpoint, stating that it was an unfair assessment. A Kenyan journalist pointed out that this is the customary treatment for all visiting heads of state and government when they arrive in Kenya. If Amid Scooby genuinely aims to build interest in his new book and establish his credibility, it might be wise for him to refrain from offering opinions on subjects about which he lacks expertise. I suppose, though, this inclination to believe that one possesses the right to express opinions on every conceivable topic is a tendency shared by both Omid Scooby-Doo and Megan. It appears that neither of them has learned the importance of refraining from making comments when they lack expertise or don't have valuable contributions to offer. Like Megan, Scooby-Doo tends to be excessively vague. For instance, in response to a fan's comment on social media about Endgame, expressing hope that it delves deeper than finding freedom, amid Scooby-Doo's reply was, they're worlds apart. Once again, it's challenging to discern his intended message. How will Endgame be substantially different from finding freedom when the subject matter appears to be largely identical? Brace yourselves, as over the next few weeks, we can anticipate an influx of media coverage on this book. As we approach November 28th, I'm eagerly anticipating someone sharing screenshots of this book. I'm certain that I won't be spending my money on it. How about you? What are your thoughts on Omid Scooby-Doo's new book? Please let me know your opinion below in the comment section. Don't forget to like and share this video with anybody else who would enjoy it. And, and if you didn't already, please click that subscribe button. By Piers Morgan with the King YouTube channel and please provide input in the comments column which other narrators should be invited. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll be back to see you in the next videos.